what you have given this time to get ready for our morning announcements. Good morning announcements. and um, you're missing that. So um, remember Wednesday night Bible study. Also remember um, Sunday School on our YouTube channel uh, where Brother Williams and Brother Nehemiah are offering um, that lesson. Also, let's remember a Thanksgiving community dinner to be held November the 24th at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church here at 4702 Ireland, here in Houston. The public is welcome to sit and dine with the St. Paul family. Free Thanksgiving dinner. Let's also remember to pick up your baskets today. If you have ordered a basket for someone, um, please pick that up and make sure that it's delivered to them or if you've had them to deliver, to come and pick it up. Um, then we will, of course, start taking up the monies for the uh, Christmas baskets also. That is due on the on December the 4th, I believe. So please make sure that um, you put in from the CWC and from the uh, men of the church. I have a poem for you this morning, a Thanksgiving poem. It says, Thou hast with every watchful eye looked down on us with holy care and from the storehouse in the sky has scattered plenty everywhere. Then lift we up our songs of praise to thee, O Father, good and kind. To thee we consecrate our days, be thine the temple of each mind. With incense sweet our thanks ascend, before thy works our powers fall. Though we should strive years without end, we could not thank thee for them all. So we have a lot to be thankful for every day of our lives, not just Thanksgiving, but every single day that the Lord allows us to wake up in the morning, whether it be with the pain in our shoulder or pain in our hip or pain in our neck, we are still allowed to wake up in the morning. And so just remember that through it all, the Lord is supplying us with everything that we need. So let us continue to be thankful for all that he, that he allows us to experience, whether it be the good or even the bad sometimes. It teaches us quite a bit. It's just that. It's your announcements with no service. Oh, thank you. No service on um, Wednesday night Zoom, I'm sorry. Yeah, this Wednesday we will be foregoing the Zoom uh, lesson, so we will pick it up uh, on next week. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for the reminder, Sister uh, Louis. So just remember, be thankful through it all. If our hearts are clear, govern yourselves accordingly. Thank you. And thank God for his goodness today. And thank God for his favor. And God is going to be real pleasant. I want to also thank the um, viewers, the Facebook Church Hopper family, and also the ones that are um, continuously viewing every Sunday, and even the ones that will um, watch this uh, live or watch this broadcast in the future, because sometimes the lives roll back around months after or years after, so I've seen posts come back around and like, wow, I forgot about that. So we, we, we pray that this will will circulate back around again. And so we thank you all for joining us. And also we thank and uh, welcome the, the in-person um, um, members that are here as well as, as our, um, also our, our visitors to mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all for your presence today. I hope that you will be blessed with the experience. And uh, we'll come back to the Word of God. This time the praise will come one more song. God bless you.
Please sign with us in your demos to 650. And we'll be singing Blessed Assurance. Thank you. 
We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Our supper this morning is a good news experience. Go ahead and ask Jesus. As we've been thinking and preaching from this theme, the good news experience, living in a day and time when every time we turn the news on, it seems to start with bad news. And we've, we've almost gotten uh, numb to it, it seems. And we expect to see uh, every time, hear it every time. We expect uh, a tragedy, some level of trauma, some trial, some trouble to be the first thing we hear when the news comes on. And so, we say, you know, we, we come to expect it. And we know that there's this, this understanding that uh, they do that to gain our attention. But today I want to say that there is good news that's going on in the world. Amen? And each time we read from this text of scripture in Psalm number 40, it, 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 it excites me to know that there are good things going on in the world. Amen? Amen. It says, many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. Has God done anything good for you today? Amen. In your life this past week? Have you seen the goodness of God in your life? To know that God is still waking us up every morning, amen? amen. The fact that he started us on our way. He gave us light, health, and strength as we uh, re re remembered a few Sundays ago. He, he told us and kept us in our right mind, amen? amen? That's a blessing in these days and times, amen? amen. There are so many people who aren't in their right mind. That's a great blessing. We can see and know that God has been good to us. And he keeps on making a way out of the way. And the text goes on to say, And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be known. You know, you're trying to put all that God has done in order. This text is saying you couldn't do it all. If you try to say, well, number one, God did this. <laughs> and number two, he did that. You begin to wonder, you know, is it really number one and number two? Because you could go on and on and on about all of the great things that God has done for us. Amen. You used to see that song, count your many blessings. Uh -huh. Name them one by one. Amen. Count your many blessings and you'll see what God has done. And I want you to, today to reflect on the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. There's a song out there that says, all my life you have been faithful. All of my life you have been so good. I want you to remember the goodness of God. Amen? Amen? Don't get bogged down in all the troubles and the chaos of this life. We're living in some, uh, as, we used to pre as I've been preaching, the unprecedented times in our life. Uh, there's not many people who remember the pandemic from 1919 still around. Amen? <laughs> but with those of us who are around today, we've seen things that have never happened before in our lifetime. And sometimes it makes us feel a level of stress and depression. But I still want you to think of the goodness of God today, amen? amen. Think of what God, the good things he has done for us. Then it says, uh, and your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted even on it. If I were to play and speak of them, they are more than can be another. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you open. Burn offering and sin offering, you did not require then I said, Behold, I come, and the scroll of the book is written of me. I delight to do your will, oh my God. And your love is in my heart. Anybody is glad to do God's will today? Because when we open our eyes and we reflect on God's goodness, that, that we should remember that God don't expect us to do everything. <laughs> he could. Can you imagine what God could have made sure that we do? Just think about the Old Testament law, Amen. The law had so many rules and regulations, more than just the Ten Commandments, but with so many rules and regulations that I'm so glad that Jesus came. To take all of those requirements away, amen? amen. That now all we have to do is repent and believe the gospel amen. and serve him faithfully, amen? amen? So he's just telling us to, to proclaim the good news, amen? Verse 9 said, I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. Oh Lord, you yourself know. And I believe that the greatest challenge of the church today is to be proclaimers or tellers of the good news. Amen? Amen. See, when we share the good news, that's a sign that God's kingdom is at work. Amen? Amen. And that's the, the divine invitation for people to come and find out more about Jesus Christ. So often we feel like we need to have some kind of uh, theological degree to be able to tell the good news. 
But I want you to know today, all you have to do is tell what God has done for you. When you tell what God has done for you, others need him too. And when you tell that good news and they can say, well, it's not the preacher who's telling the good news. It's my neighbor. It's my friend. It's my aunt, uncle, or cousin, my family member. If God can do it for them, surely he can do it for me. Amen? Amen. And that's the power of the good news. The good news experience. When you experience the goodness of God and you tell somebody, okay. that you can experience it as well. Amen. It's like going to a good restaurant that just opens. Amen? It was really good. You go and tell all your friends. You need to go to such and such a restaurant. Amen. And then, before you know it, that restaurant is filled with people because they have spread <laughs> the good news. Amen. Well, you're not going to be spreading the good news about Jesus Christ so that our churches and congregations can be filled. Amen? Amen. We need to be about the Father's business, spreading the good news. And then our text of scripture, our preaching text, comes from the Gospel of Mark. Mark's gospel was written that we might see the service and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Amen. How he gave his life for you and me. And he, he spent his time on earth making a difference in people's lives. And in our text today, we see that there was a crowd of people who came to Jesus. And we remember last time, the demon-possessed man, he was healed. And Jesus sent him away to go and tell the good news to those ten cities. And he went back across that same sea where the disciples had experienced the storm and Jesus said, peace be still and the wave, the wind, the wave ceased and the winds calmed. And, and here he is again going across the sea again. And he's getting, arriving to the other side. And here's where we pick up our text today. And our subject is, go ahead and ask Jesus. Go ahead and ask Jesus. What, what startled me, what stayed with me in this text today as I was preparing this message is that the Bible says that the great multitude had gathered to him. Mm -hmm. But everybody didn't uh, request what their needs were from him. Right. Help me, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So there are a few things in this text I want to reflect on as we consider. Go ahead and ask Jesus. The first thing I want to say in this text is recognize who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. The text says, now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side. A great multitude gathered to him. And he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers. Somebody say one. One. one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus, and by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. See, I want to recognize today that we need to recognize who Jesus is, amen? So many people, the multitude gathered around him and they wanted to see what he was going to do. But only one person, help me Holy Ghost, had the courage to go ahead and ask Jesus for a blessing. Amen? Amen. So many times in life, we come to church, we just go on through the motions. Help me Holy Ghost. We just go on through the ritual. We hear, we hear this church because grandma was here and mom was here and dad was here. But I want to know today, are you willing to ask Jesus for what you need in your life? Do you know who he is? Yeah. He is the Son of God. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And we see in this text that this man, John Earth, he worshiped Jesus Christ. He approached him. He, made his, he, he came to Jesus and he, he, he recognized who he was. And he knew that Jesus had what he needed. Amen? Amen. And today I want us as the body of Christ, the believers, to recognize who Jesus is. The text says, and behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, what did he do? <laughs> he fell at his feet. In other words, he worshipped him. He knew that he was the son of God. And he had the power, the ability, the authority to change the situation of his daughter who was sick. And I want to see those people who have that kind of faith, amen, that we know who Jesus is. We know that he's able to do to do great things in our lives. Amen. To be able to turn our circumstances around. To be the blessing that we're standing in need of. Mm -hmm. Jesus can, can make a difference in our life. Yes, he Hebrews 11, verse 6, says it like this. And I love the way it says it. says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. For he who comes to God must what believe that he is. Mm -hmm. And... That he is a reward of those 
who will diligently seek him. I want to know are you ready to ask Jesus for what you need? There was a multitude around him, but only one recognized it and went and asked him for a blessing. I told you this, go ahead and ask Jesus. The second thing in this text this morning is request what you need from Jesus. Request what you need from Jesus. Mark 5, verse 23 says, And begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hand on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. I want you to say, I want you to see that in this text. In this Jairus, he had faith. Amen. Amen. He believed that Jesus Christ could heal his daughter. He believed that he would only approach him <laughs> and go to him and ask him, Lord, if you would just touch my daughter, she would be healed. I want to today that there are people today who still have that kind of faith. Amen. Amen. Who believe that if they would have only request God to, to touch them and make a difference in their life, that they would do it. Because so often in life, we're just going through the motions. No, it's Sunday, it's 11 o'clock, I know where I should be, amen? Now, I want you to not just simply go through the motions today, I want you to ask God for what you need, amen? amen. Request what you need from Jesus. Amen. And in this text, Jairus, he went to Jesus and asked what he needed from him. He made his request known unto God. That's what you and I need to do in our lives today. Not just let the moment pass. So many times we just allow the moment to pass. Amen? Amen. We allow Jesus to, to walk on by. What the thought that God brought to my mind was it's like seeing a superstar, a, a popular person, and all we want to do is get away and see him go by and say, I saw so and so. But did you get what you need from the situation? Amen? Amen. And we see that Jesus was somebody that you could approach. Amen? He was somebody that you could ask a question if you need to. And I want us to be those believers today who won't just let the moment pass. But we will request from Jesus what we need. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, it's thanksgiving season, amen? Let your request be made known to God. Amen, somebody. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I want you to look at what Jairus asked. He was saying to Jesus and begged him earnestly saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come, lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. See, Jairus was saying, you know, Jesus, I believe in you. He earnestly came to Jesus. He begged him. He did not keep his request on the inside. Help me, Holy Ghost. Right. Sometimes we just, like I said, we let the moments pass by. Yeah, yeah. We let we let the whole we let the whole week go by, and we just say, well, if it if it will be, it will be. If it won't be, it won't be. God wants to make, have the enough courage and confidence in Jesus Christ to make our request known. Amen. To believe that God is a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek Him. Amen? Amen? Request what you need from Jesus. And that is a lesson that I learned from Him today. Don't just keep it to yourself. Don't just hold it in. Don't just hold back. <laughs> but go ahead and ask Jesus what you need. Amen? Amen. Jairus didn't hold it in. He didn't hold back. He didn't keep it to himself. And when you keep things to yourself, it causes a whole other level of, of, of suffering, amen? amen? Another level of anxiety, amen? amen? And isn't that what we see going on in our society today? So many people are worried and stressed. They have anxiety. And even we have these mental disorders where people are just stressed out. And they won't tell anybody why they're going through it. Not willing to talk to a counselor or talk to a friend or tell their parents, you know, mom and dad, I'm going through all these, these things, these stressful things. Because you're keeping it to yourself, amen? Why don't you tell somebody?
about it. What's going on? Mother, my mom is always tell us, even if I can't beat you up, I ain't going to be the only one that know. Amen, somebody. But we walk around holding things in and we're bringing stress and strain to our own bodies. Because you won't tell what's going on in your life. I want to be able to go ahead <laughs> and ask Jesus. Amen. Go ahead and tell him what's going on in your life. Amen. Because he has an answer for you. Amen. He knows how to come through for those who come to him. The last thing I want to say in this text is the blessing that I want you to remember. No matter what season you are in in life. The last thing, number three, is Jesus will respond. Oh, thank you, Jesus, today. Jesus will respond. The text says that in verse 24, the text says, so, <laughs> Jesus went with him. That's enough right there, amen? For us to be able to be excited about what can happen if we will only open our mouth, amen, and ask the Lord what we need. The text says, so, in other words, after all of that happened, after all of that struggle, after all of that trial, after all of the burdens, after all of the fears, after all of the diagnosis, after everything he went through, he asked Jesus, and so Jesus went with him. I was wondering that Jesus would go with him too. Didn't he promise he would never leave us, nor forsake us? Amen, somebody. We ought to be able to remember that if we were only asking, if we only call upon him, Jesus will respond. Now I know we've gone through times in our life when it seemed like nothing was going on. That we was pounding on heaven's door. It seemed like God was ignoring us. But I want you to know that sometimes we have an enemy who's always fighting against us. You know the story of Daniel, how Daniel prayed and the Bible said that the, 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 the adversary was working against him coming. I want you to know today, don't stop praying. And most of all, don't stop believing. Because God is right here unto you, amen? If you would only be willing enough and have enough courage and have enough faith to say, Lord, I'm going to ask you what's going on in my life. I'm going to tell you what's going on in my life. I'm going to make sure I'm going to keep it to myself. So, <laughs> Jesus went with me. And then the Bible says, <laughs> and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. I want you to see today the power of your witness, the power of your example, the power of you following through on Jesus Christ. Because if you follow Jesus, somebody else just might follow him too. If you call on Jesus, somebody else just might call on him too. Because what we find out in this life is that we're not the only ones going through something. Amen, somebody. There's always something going on in our lives. And if we would only have the courage, have the gumption, as old Satan would say, but we have to have enough uh, willingness to say, Lord, I need you. I need you to come through for me. I'm going through a trial. I'm going through some problems, and I can't fix it myself. But the Bible says so. Jesus went with him. And a great multitude followed him and thronged him. I want you to see the power of your witness today. Sometimes we, we feel so old, so burdened by the world that we forget that we're even somebody. We feel like people have ignored us and have overlooked us and cast us to the side. But I want you to know that you can just need to stop and talk to Jesus, amen? You know what I'm saying? Have a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> Tell him all about your struggle. You know, hear your famous by your, you don't have to be loud, just, just go to him, amen. He will answer by and by. I want us to be the people who will go to Jesus and know that Jesus will respond. He'll respond to your famous cry. John chapter 14, verse 13 says, And whatever you ask in my name, I, I might figure it out. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'll try to come up with some kind of a formula, or strategy. Is that what it says in your Bible? It says, I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do. 
Tell us in the church today, to those who are here today, I want you to believe in Jesus Christ and go ahead and ask him. Amen? Amen. Don't hold it in. Don't hold back. Don't try to figure out all the right way. Just go ahead and ask him. Amen? Amen. Put it in Jesus' hand. Put it at Jesus' feet. And I believe Jesus will respond. If you abide in him, amen, and his word abides in you, you can ask whatever you will. And it shall be done. I want to be those believers today who will ask Jesus. Who will say, Lord, I need you. I need you to come through for me today. I need you to hear what's going on in my life and give me the, the blessing, the solution, the healing, the, the strength, whatever, whatever, whatever it is I don't need. So I can be the person that you want me to be. So I can overcome and experience your goodness, experience your kindness, experience your faith. Let us stand together. The good news experience. Go ahead and ask Jesus. I pray you're going to bless message today. If you understand that it's all right for us to go ahead and ask Jesus, to ask him for the things that we're standing in need of, to not hold back, to ask him, Lord, I need you to come through for me. I need you to answer my prayer. I need you to come through in great ways. Today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can know him. This is easy to ABC. And to admit that you are a sinner and you need a Savior. To be believed that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, that your sins might be forgiven. And see confess him as your Lord and Savior. Why don't you pray a simple prayer with me? Father God, we thank you for your word today. Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need you. Please forgive me of my sin. Lord, I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again that my sins might be forgiven. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. Save me. Now I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Fill me with your spirit. And I live my life for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you're now part of the family of God. He has a purpose and a plan for your life. He wants to bless you. And give you this good news experience. I'm going to say, well, Pastor, I'm already saved, but I've been going through trials and tribulations. I've been carrying burdens. Today I want to say, go ahead and ask Jesus. Recognize him for who he is. He is the Lord of Lords. And there is nothing too hard for God. I want you to request what you need from Jesus today. Don't hold it in. Don't hold back. Don't wait another moment. Don't wait another day. Go ahead and ask Jesus what you need. And today I believe Jesus will respond. He'll respond and meet your need. If you want to come to the altar and pray today, you can come as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you today. We thank you for your word. We remind you in your word that we can go ahead and ask you. You need to recognize who you are. You are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You are the Lord of hosts and everything is under your control today. And I pray today that someone will, will recognize who you are with faith today and go ahead and request everything they need from you, Lord. You will not hold it back. You will not hold it in, but we will go ahead and make our request known unto you. And Lord, we ask you to respond. Respond to our faith today. Respond to our request. Respond to our needs. And though we know that great things will happen when we call upon your name. For the word declares, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Save us from our trouble. Save us from any sickness. Save us from any danger, O God. Most of all, save us and keep us from sin, O God. And Lord, we'll give your name all the glory. All the honor and the praise. Because one day we want to hear, when we stand before you, when you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now, we can rule over many things. Enter to the joy of our Lord. Let's show people today. We give your name all the praise and thanks. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I pray you've been blessed by the message today. That you're encouraged. You're inspired by the word. God bless you.
We'll say goodbye to the Fish of Black. God bless you all. In this time, if there are any expressions in light of the message, you can do so.